My name is Frank Samstot, and the aim of this presentation is to present the results of a new study using the wound treatment MPPT for treating wounds and pressure ulcers in persons with spinal cord injury. Treatment of infected wounds in spinal cord injury represents an unmet medical need. The FDA in April 2022 concluded that chronic wounds, also in the general population, represent an unmet medical need due to lack of effective treatments. This was in part based on a study they did in 2016, where they concluded that antimicrobials are ineffective in treating wound infections. However, due to lack of alternatives, they still remain the standard of care. In addition to the limitations of current treatments, people with spinal cord injury also suffer from impaired wound healing due to chronic wound suppression as a result of their spinal cord injury. Consequently, there is an urgent need for wound treatments that are effective in people with spinal cord injury. MPPPT, or micropore particle technology, is a passive immune therapy which supports the immune system. It acts via the microbiome using physical forces. It does not contain any antimicrobials, and there's no use of anti antimicrobials in the treatment process. It's classified as a medical device and has been C marked as two, since 2016 under the trade name capsule. If you look down here in the left corner, you can see uh, MPPT itself. It's a powder, white powder is applied topically to the wound surface. And the way it's used, you can see to the right, first to bright the wound, wash it thoroughly with tap water, dry it, apply the, uh, the MPPT to all wound surfaces. And you can either dress it with a wound, 100% cotton dressing, or you can leave it undressed. The study was a prospective single arm study with 44 wounds. The single arm design was required by uh, ICH E10 guidelines. The inclusion criteria were a wound or a pressure ulcer below the site of injury in a spinal cord injured person. All wounds presenting during the enrollment period uh, were, were included. There were no selection. The only exclusion criteria was prolonged non-compliance. Treatment was delivered by a telemedicine approach to the patient's family or carers being responsible for the dressing changes. During the dressing changing process, they took pictures and these were sent to a wound expert who will review the pictures and provide feedback before the next dressing change. The study was a collaboration between the National Spine Injury Center at Stoke Vanderbilt Hospital in Aylesbury, Duke of Cornwall Spine Treatment Center in Salisbury, Spine Injury Association, which is the largest uh, patient organization in the UK, and Wounds for Limited, which has developed and is manufacturing MPPT. This is an example from the study. It's a chronic grade four pressure ulcer. It had been treated for nine weeks with Manuka honey. However, it had deteriorated and was highly exuding. This is day zero where the application of MPPT is started. You can see it from as you progress through here, how the wound rapidly decreases in size and uh, towards closure. The next picture is a summary of the wounds and pressure ulcers that were included in the study. Most of these were pressure ulcers. The main finding was that the closure rate was 100%, that is, all the wounds and pressure ulcers reached closure. The y-axis to the left is median days to closure, and the uh, y-axis to the right is the median cost uh, in pounds to reach closure. The time to closure and the cost depended on the severity and the uh, age of the wound. So for acute, you can see how the um, time and cost increase going from acute grade one to two ulcers to acute grade three to four, chronic grade three and chronic grade four. Um, and clearly show the importance of um, starting treatment very early as soon as, the, as soon as the wound is generated. Next slide shows the cost comparisons for the treatment of acute grade three pressure ulcers. They are among the most common. The top row shows the data for MPPT involving uh, grade three ulcers in people with spinal cord injury, whereas the lower row is standard care in the general population where the, where the uh, ulcers are treated with antimicrobials. Anti the first column shows the closure rate the first year, and that is 100% for MPPT compared to only 15% for standard care. The second column is time to closure for those uh, wounds that did reach closure. It was 1.6 months for MPPT compared to 8.2 months for standard care. 
the cost of first year mean cost were uh, 1,900 pounds for MPPT compared to 9,700 pounds with standard care. So by using MPPT instead of standard care, it's possible to obtain a savings of 81%. Rennet et al. reported in 2009 that about 32% of grade four pressures lead to the development of osteomyelitis. And Russell et al. in 2020 found that the median time to development of osteomyelitis was only four months. You can see in this first picture, you can see the um, how the infection from the wound reaches the bone, causing the development of bone infection or osteomyelitis. As the infection grows, the amount of debris, infectious debris that is um, expelled from the infection in the bone into the surrounding tissue increases. The body needs to uh, dispose of this and therefore creates a discharging fistula, which is a canal from the bone to the, the skin surface through which this can pass. Problem is just that the because the debris is highly infectious, it causes a strong soft tissue infection and a breakdown of the tissue, leading to often quite quite large cavity wounds and spreading infection. The way MPPT can help is it can control the soft tissue infection and control the canal, such that it the changes this uncontrolled discharging fistula into a controlled canal without any real soft tissue infection. See the next slide here is an example, which is a pressure, year, a pressure ulcer, which is one year old at the time of starting MPPT. Osmolitis has been confirmed on, underneath it. And you can see down here that actually at one point a uh, fragment of bone fell out through the wound. At start, the wound is 5.5 by three centimeters leading into a large cavity with uh, skin flaps and gorges. After months and months of treatment with MPPT, the size is reduced by 50%. And this uh, decrease in size continues over time, as you can see here. After about 19 months, the person uh, submitted for surgery for the osteomyelitis. And the benefit of using MPPT is that surgery now takes place in soft tissue with minimal soft tissue infection, thereby improving the um, probability of a successful outcome. This next slide shows the summary data for a number of uh, draining fistulas, what happened with, with the use of MPPT. Because the amount of MPPT that's used depends on the size of the wound, the um, data has been normalized such that the first month represent 100%, and you can then see the reduction over time. And in about three to four months, the amount reduced, which is, goes down to uh, less than six, um, the reduction is more than 60% compared to the start. In terms of cost savings by using MPPT like this, you, data show that uh, cost savings are more than 70%. It leads to an improved health of the patient simply by reducing the amount of soft tissue infection, thereby reducing the risk of sepsis. Furthermore, bed rest is not required for MPPT to achieve these effects. And by using telemedicine, the uh, patient becomes independent, can do uh, dressing changes wherever and when they, they prefer. So in conclusion, <clears throat> MPPT has been found safe. No adverse events have been observed. And because it does not contain any antimicrobials, it will not contribute to the development of antimicrobial resistant, resistance in the patients. The study found that all acute and chronic wounds and pressures is reached full closure. For draining fistulas, MPPT was able to remove the soft tissue infection and generate new tissue, thereby reducing the size of the wound. Very important is that bed rest is not required, which has huge mental and physical implications for patients and impact the quality of life. Delivery of treatment can be done by telemedicine, which also provides independence because you do not have to be in a specific place at a certain time um, to have the dressings changed. The higher closure rates and quicker healing meant savings of 60% or more per wound, also reduced demand on nursing staff, and finally, in terms of the environmental sustainability, because MPPT does not contain and its use does not require any antibiotics or antiseptics. And it's known that both contribute to antimicrobial resistance. It means that by shifting to MPPT, the 
to a huge reduction in the amount of antimicrobials and thereby this antimicrobial resistance developing, which can, will impact uh, climate change and lead to a loss of biodiversity. Furthermore, buildings and the packaging is recyclable, which means again, there's no plastic, silicone, or chemical pollution resulting from the use of MPPT. And finally, there's a strong reduction in CO2 emission due to less transport. Thank you very much.